That's right, boys and gals, that's Dante versus level 9999 Thrax in Steel Path Cascade. And this was during the nerf. He is technically still nerfed, but listen, we can still do a lot of damage. And guess what? They're also thinking about reverting certain changes because DE. What's good, folks? It's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with a new Dante. This is a third Dante video, but, but this time it's against level camp enemies because content. This is for the people who have lives and the people who are living under the rock. If you didn't know, Dante went through a few changes. Without confirming anything, DE just launched an update. Boom, Dante changes went live. It felt way too rushed and without any back and forth or any thoughts from the players. So what happened was take it see if they like it and apparently no we did not like it wow who would have thought it's like test servers would have been a really good idea don't you think one of the major outliers was the line of sight changes to his fourth ability if you don't get it let me explain it to you so just imagine there's a railing your, your dante standing right there the enemy is just across the railing the enemy sees you looking back at him. You guys make eye contact. Love song is playing at the background. You cast your ability, but guess what? Ah, I can't touch him. That's how bad it was. Level 500 Thrax. Oh, you see that line of sight? You see that line of sight garbage? Dude, a f***ing bush. A bush blocked my damage. Basically, so weird tiny obstacle would completely block your damage. So to play, you had to be floating so you can get clear line of sight, freaking bird's eye view style to actually hit enemies. Or the enemy has to be like right there next to you. So you have clear view of the enemies so you can deal damage. And DE realized, oh, crap, <laughs> that must have been really bad, right, guys? Right? Of course. So today we got a hot fix. This was just an hour ago, and they tweaked some of the line of sight changes. However, even though they tweaked line of sight, there's still a line of sight check, and it can be also really bad. How many of you play with a very low field of view? And if you do... <laughs> Dante himself can count as an obstacle, blocking the damage. So if you play with very low field of view, well, good luck. You're playing a very bad state of Dante. On top of that, they did do some nerfs to his page flight, and now they're thinking about reverting it, adding back and formalizing the status damage vulnerability to Dante's page flight. In other words, not just making enemies take more status proc, but also increasing the damage of their status. So these are some of the inconsistencies and bad decision making that DE has done. However, that didn't stop me from taking Dante to level cap and still one-shotting Thrax units. But then you do have to realize I was playing a nerf state of Dante and I was still able to do this. And this loadout doesn't require you to use any of your weapons for damaging or even priming. It's just pure ability cast Dante. What makes it interesting is that you don't really have to plan out your weapons as much. But here's another thing. Dante isn't a frame for people who do not like pressing buttons. Even though it's a one shot on these thracks, it does take a lot of steps to do so. Again, doing this doesn't necessarily mean this is the best way to do level cap cascade. I'm just saying it is possible to do so. There are a lot easier setups than this one. And if you've seen the video that I released prior to the nerf, I did change a couple of things just to make this even more versatile of a build. Roar is still going to be my helmet because it does affect most of his kit. Unfortunately, the fourth ability doesn't get the full multiplier of roar, so you don't get that double dip, but it's still a massive boost to your damage. Of course, double light first and then four to get your overguard, dark first and then light first to get the page flight. Page flight is very important. Without page flight to actually make enemies take more damage, you're not going to be able to one shot overguard. Page flight is super important. However, the birds have really dumb AI, and if the birds aren't near the Thrax, well, you're going to have to cast 
Page Flight again. So it's going to be six abilities rather than three because the birds just decided to fly off somewhere else. So hopefully with the additional Dante tweaks, they do fix the bird AI. Please, they're stupid. Looking at the Archon Shards, full Tau Forge, like legit, double casting speed here, and three Strength Shards. But then again, even though I've taken this build against Cascade, it can be used anywhere. Usually if you're doing Cascade, the focus school has to be Madurai because of Contamination Wave to debuff enemies. And then of course you got your Void Strike to deal even more damage. You have your Power Transfer for that amp critical damage. So yes, this is the best Focus School if you're going into Cascade. Without this, it's just doo-doo water. However, Madurai does offer you some additional feats where you get more casting speed and you get more strength. However, for people who don't really care too much about Cascade and just wanna do whatever, I highly recommend Zenric. Why Zenric? Well, because of Energy Pulse. You have your Wellspring and Hardened Wellspring. You still get the option of getting some strength. However, it's 20% less strength, and it's only within the Wellspring, but it's still some strength. And of course, Wellspring has that energy regen over time. With Energy Pulse, you get more energy when you pick up the Energy Orb. And just to keep consistency, I will keep Madurai. I know a lot of Warframe players aren't high APM players, and they find that going into your Operator to do that really quickly is too much work but then again if you're used to it you're used to it right so not even going to use an energy pad at the beginning and i'll show you how much energy we can get so we can cast our two and then boom get overguard alternate fire with the grimoire and this will give us those 10 stacks of energy regen and we also get our archon stretch from our deriga cast our page flight this is important double cast of dark bursts and then boom we're filling up our energy. This is without Roar. Now with Roar, you can see it's a lot better. So usually something like this would block our damage. But we can clearly see those... G Never mind, the birds are killing him. I'm trying to demonstrate something, you son of a fish! Anyway, it's the same... Uh, it's the same combo. Three, three... Four. You get to nuke everything in sight. Look at that, that was beautiful. And we get so much energy in return. Oh, yeah. And this is without Roar. Let's refresh our Roar. We don't even have 250 kills yet with Molt Augmented. Okay, usually this really would actually block enemies. But now we can see them. Also, make sure that your field of view isn't so low so you can actually see the enemies. Yeah, so these guys, unfortunately, they get blocked. We can't deal damage to them because of the line of sight requirement. So even though Dante has this really bad line of sight check, he's still able to dish out a lot of damage. His KPM did fall quite a bit because of this line of sight requirement. But yeah, the combo is still the same. Just make sure you have page flight and then nuke everything in sight. 60 million damage. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. And we have a 132% roar. Shred those Xmas units. So you see how we're just spamming abilities? We have very good energy return. And I haven't used a single energy pad at all. I know there are some people who might find a different setup more useful. Where, hey, I would like to use a different companion. You actually can. Because you don't necessarily have to rely on Archon Stretch as much. Because the build is actually sufficient without it. And if you were to play outside of Cascade, as I said, Xenoric is also a nice addition to this. Alright, here comes the Acolyte. And usually if there's an Acolyte that's a bit more tankier than normal, what you can easily do is use Matarai. And there. Dead. And the melee weapon I'm using is the Praetus. Just for the parkour velocity and movement speed. As you can see... You can do some nice skating or coptering, however you like to call it. See, a lot of movement. This is without even bullet jumping. Just like that. It's just meleeing and dashing forward. Very nice. Let's go back to the simulacrum and show you some amp tech for Cascade. Here we are in the Simulacrum, and let me show you how we deal with the Thrax. Again, make sure your page flight is on them. 
you cast your dark first and then boom one shot of course as you can see they take zero damage from your weapons and even abilities. They're only weak to your amp. And because you're using matter, you're going to be using your contamination wave to debuff them so they take more damage from void. You can see that icon, that blue icon above their head. Because I'm using eternal eradicate and onslaught, I need to use my ability and also lose energy. So there are a few ways to do this. Expend your energy by using your contamination wave and then do a void sling. And right now you can see I procced onslaught for the critical chance and eradicate for the damage. Let's see that again. Contamination wave, void sling. You get your buffs. And then boom, you can kill them. Of course, I would say you can debuff them and use Matterai for even more damage. Just like that. The Matterai Void Strike ability will give you this massive damage multiplier for your amps and even your weapons on the Warframe. So it's always nice to have that. And it's best to activate Void Strike on a full energy bar. You can see on the bottom right corner, there are two sources of energy. You have the line and the circle. The line is your amp energy. You see how it's depleting when I shoot? And when you Void Sling, it's consuming the circle energy bar. So that's how you can monitor what type of energy you're expending. So make sure your full energy when you activate it, you get the maximum buff, which is a thousand percent. And when you activate Void Strike, you trigger both Onslaught and Eradicate because activating Void Strike consumes your energy and counts as an ability. But to ensure that you're going to deal as much damage as possible, make sure you actually use Contamination Wave on the enemy. Okay, now we're taking a look at the Operator or Drifter loadout, so it doesn't really matter which one you use. For my amp, I have the 577, which is the Cantic, Propa, and Certus. My operator is fitted with Magus Cloud. This gives me a larger Void Sling radius. So when I Void Sling, I can hit those little rift things in the Exilizers a lot easier. Of course, Magus Lockdown for some additional crowd control. And for my amp arcanes, Radicate for the damage and Onslaught for the critical chance. That's it. This is the most basic cascade loadout you can ever have. Let's have a look at Dante and how I've put him together. Reminder for anything else, use the timestamps. Taking a look at the build. These are the polarities that I have. In the aura, I'll be running Growing Power. When you proc a status effect with your weapons, you get 25% strength. Your Sentinel can proc this with their Sentinel weapon, and of course, your weapon as well, which is really nice. Now you can see over here, I have 45% extra strength. This is coming from the three Town Forge shards. And to add on to that strength, I will be running Blind Rage, Transient Fortitude. Both of these will give me strength and they also give me negatives. Blind Rage will reduce my efficiency, which is not an issue, and Transient Fortitude reduces my duration. Now to counteract this duration, of course, I'll be running Prime Continuity. This gives Roar 38 seconds and my buff uptime a 57 seconds. However, I'll be adding a very unique type of strength modifier, and that's in the form of Precision Intensify. And this loadout will be even stronger, especially if they follow through with the status vulnerability changes or reverting the changes. Now for my energy, I will be running Prime Flow. And for my energy conversion, we have Equilibrium picking up health orbs, will net us some energy. However, we won't be taking any damage to our health, so picking up energy will not convert into health. For range, I'll be running Archon Stretch. That's it, just one range mod. This range mod synergizes with my companion, the Dorigo. However, if you're not going to be using the Dariga, it's just fine. You don't necessarily need to have this, as long as you have Stretch. Adding this range multiplier nets us 29 meters on the Dark Verse and 43 meters on my Final Verse. As you can see, each radius is going to be the same. Now, the final mod can be literally almost anything you want. You can either put Augur Secrets, Augur Reach... But for this case, for Cascade, I am running Energy Nexus. This is for the consistent energy region. If you're not doing Cascade, I would recommend either Reach or Augur Secrets. Either one is just fine. And in the X-List, there's no point running the best mod in the game because we have consistent Overguard and Overguard Regeneration. So, I will be running 
power drift for that additional strength so our total modded strength for all the other abilities will be 314 but we get the additional 90 percent on the final verse thanks to precision intensify for the arcanes just to add on to that strength, I'll be running Molt Augmented. Of course, to reduce the amount of energy we consume, we're going to be using Steadfast. You will have some people who prefer running Energize. And if you prefer running Energize and you're not doing Cascade, then yeah, stick to Energize and Zenric. And you can drop Energy Nexus for additional range or additional strength up to you. Now for the energy upkeep, I am running the Favonius Codex. Yes, this is an energy regen reference. For those who know, you know. The same loadout as before. Just make sure you have Zata's Invocation and Hara Canticle. These two are the way to go. My companion is still the Diriga. The loadout is still the same. You're going to be running Arcoil, Saint Deconstruct, and Duplex Bond just for the energy. However, if you're playing with Dante, I would suggest dropping Synth Fiber and going with Calculated Shot just so your companion can shoot more and trigger growing power more consistently. We have the Hellstrom just modded for Violent Heat. The primary doesn't matter. You can use whatever primary you want. All I did was put a Magum Serration for the sprint speed. And adding on to that sprint speed and more movement, because moving from one talisman to the other is going to be very important in a Cascade mission or even any other mission rather. I'm using the Praetis. Why the Praetis? Because it offers us way more utility with the Evolution 2 giving us sprint speed and slide Evolution 4 with the parkour velocity. Very, very nice. And if you're going to be heavy attacking, the final evolution with the heavy attack windup speed. And this one just for the initial combo. And for the build, it's it really doesn't matter. Just make sure you have a basic heavy attack build exposure very useful dispatch overdrive for the speed and i'll highly recommend for you to put some range rather than this mod but i just i didn't want to put another forma this is the new and improved dante loanouts where you can do pretty much everything and just destroy the game anyway folks that has been it for me i do hope you've enjoyed and learned something from this video and if you did please feel free to leave a like share and sub subscriber for more warframe content streams and so much more do refer to the description thanks for watching and as always a peace bye bye now